Lewis and Robin, thank you for joining Hope and I in this episode of the Travel Path Podcast. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Sure. Thanks for having us. <laughs> yeah, so we know you guys on YouTube as Bout That RV Life. You have your website, centralwashingtonrvrentals.com, where you focus on your RV rental business. And yeah. on YouTube, you dedicate your channel to educating people on the RV rental business. And this podcast, the travelpath.com and the Travel Path podcast is dedicated to helping people reach their travel goals. And owning an RV and traveling, they go hand in hand. And I think this is an excellent way for somebody to learn how to use their RV as a side hustle and to turn that into a <clears throat> passive income source to potentially yeah. fund their travels. And if somebody who doesn't own an RV right now, it's a great opportunity to learn about a new side hustle where you can yeah. start saving up and getting into that new business. So before we dive in, why don't we start by having you guys share a little about yourselves and then how you got started in the RV rental business. So we're both from Washington. She's from, you know, we live here in Royal City. She's from here, born and raised. Um, I'm from a little Lower Valley um, area on the other side of the mountains here, but just through different paths, we were able to find each other and <laughs> and get married. We've got three kids, uh, 13, 9, and 10, Ten and, and 8. And eight. <laughs> I always forget. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, and they're, they're, they keep us busy for sure. And yeah, we, we're entrepreneurs. We own um, a few businesses. We own the RV rental businesses, the RV rental business, which is how we got started. And then um, I love sports cards, collectibles, certain things like that. And I uh, partnered up with a couple of friends. We have a shop in uh, Wenatchee, Washington called uh, Core Sports Cards and Collectibles. And then we just recently bought... Um, <laughs> a couple of gyms here in rural cities, smaller gyms. Yeah. Rural fitness. Yeah. yeah. No kidding. You guys are busy. Wow. <laughs> I don't know if I have anything to add to that. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, so multiple businesses, multiple kids. Yeah. That's, you guys have a lot going on. So how did you guys get started in the RV rental business? Yeah. About, let's see. So I guess it was in the spring of 21, mm -hmm. Um, my father passed away and it was unexpected, but it was one of those things that makes you feel like, you know, life is short. You never know what's going to happen. And um, we decided we needed to start making some memories with our kids. Mm -hmm. And what better way to do that than to go camping and travel and do that kind of stuff. So we ended up buying our first travel trailer. It was a 24 foot long bunkhouse sweet little thing and thought it would be great for us. I went online trying to find campsites that we could go and check out and <laughs> go on a couple of trips and make some memories and realized that in Washington state, if you haven't booked your reservations like six to nine months in advance, you're not going to have a campsite yeah. for the summer. And Lewis is not a person who's going to sit still for very long. And so we have like, he's like, okay, we have this trailer now, but we can't even use it. I'm going to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> so we, um, we were just looking around and as it happens, when you're shopping for something, we started seeing ads for different RVs coming up and we had seen some comments on a Facebook marketplace post that said, why don't you try listing it on RV share instead of selling it? And so we had never heard of that before. We went and checked it out. Um, we listed our first one on RV Share that month or that day. And within like five minutes of publishing the listing, we had our first reservation. So his wheels started turning, going, oh, hmm, there's something yeah. here. I was like, if I could do this with one, imagine if I had 10. Because <laughs> <laughs> we ended up getting booked out until October. So it was it was a real good success for us. Yeah. So that season we had the one and then we ended up buying another one a couple of months later because we there was a lot of um, demand. And at the end of the season, we bought a third one. So we started our second season with three accumulated, I think, six more that season. So we ended that season with nine. And then this last year, we started the season with 11 and ended with 34, which is what we've got sitting out here now. Um, except for I just found out with you guys 10, 10 minutes ago that we've got three more. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's just kind of grown like wildfire. It's yeah. been kind of crazy. One thing that really, you know, people think about like these numbers and go, well, holy crap, how did, did you do you own them all? One of the things that really kind of catapulted our business and really changed everything for us is after we had bought three, 
a friend of ours um, reached out and was like, hey, I've got an RV. Um, I don't use it. I'm just going to give it to you guys. Uh, rent it out and we'll split the profits. Just let me use it like once or twice a year. And I was like, man, that's a great idea. Yeah. And it just got me thinking. There's so many people that have bought in RVs or bought in units that they don't use them anymore. They hardly use them or once a year or whatever, right? And are like us that don't book their sites in advance and you know can't go camping. So we were like... I started marketing and I started kind of aggressively heading towards, okay, who has a camper and who wants to make money from it, right? Who wants to make some passive income, so. That's a good point. Like how many times are you driving down the road and you see that same RV parked at someone's house 51 yep. weeks out of the year and then they use it once, right? So yep. then yep. you thought there's opportunities out there and that's allowed you guys to kind of exponentially grow your business. I want to start by asking some of the big questions and probably some of the biggest objections anybody would face when they want to get into this business, which is how do you overcome and deal with the issues of your RV getting damaged, having somebody use this expensive machine, this expensive vehicle without any experience? How is the claim process handled? So I guess start with like insurance and the claim process. I'll start with kind of the beginning of like vetting people, right? Because I think this is an important piece that people miss when they first get started. There's certain things that you could do to vet people that are, you know, more responsible, right? Uh, you can put an age limit to um, who who can rent your unit. So for us, it's 25 and above. Um, you've got to be 25 years or older. The other thing is we put a deposit that's, um, I feel like it's high enough to where the, the type of person that is, you know, fiscally responsible can afford to pay $1,000 to 1500 bucks to hold for a deposit. Plus, that also covers us in case there's a lot of, you know, little damages or certain things that happen that, um, you know, a person, you know, might just, you know, look at and go, man, you know, I, I don't know if I can afford that. But if you got the deposit, you can take it out of the deposit. So vetting people, I think, is important when there are issues. We've had anywhere from, you know, a person breaking a five dollar part to somebody destroying our awning and we had to get the whole thing replaced. It's really funny story. We actually just got a call saying it's done today. Hmm. Um, but but yeah, it's 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 kind of crazy. So when you go through something like that, luckily there the platforms have insurance. We've got commercial insurance, and you just got to go through the process of um, making a claim, and that can be kind of a, a daunting task. But in our in our experience, it worked out okay. So there are systems in place for those types of things. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you saw Hope and I's face light up when he said his awning because we had the same thing happen. We rented our van out over the summer and renter was driving down the road. The awning was out and oh ended up snapping. Gosh. So you guys beat us to it. We're getting ours hopefully in the next couple of weeks. We'll have it back now. Yeah. It happened in July. So that's that's one of those things in my experience, at least with renting it out and using the RV share and outdoorsy platforms is they do get resolved, but it took a long time. So we yeah. were going back and forth with the insurance company. Like I said, this happened in July and we're finally hopefully getting it on in January, right? right. Um, so that's just probably a word of caution that it does work out, but it does take time. Yeah. And unfortunately, we learned during that process is they'll cover the replacement, but in terms of profit loss, you know, if it's an issue where you right. can't rent it out or if they want to we got beat up a little bit because it didn't have an awning. So we had to buy like a little tent for them. Yeah. And then at the same time, we learned that it didn't cover interior damage if they used up their entire deposit. So that's something to keep in mind yeah. too. Yeah. So from a, from a business standpoint, I think, you know, you talked about overcoming the challenges and the, the scary parts of it. And for us, a big part of it has just been letting go of the worry that comes with somebody else's in my unit and realizing like it's going to get used. It's going to get damaged. You're going to have to replace some things and planning for that stuff, building it into your pricing, holding money back so that you know if if I have to replace the little table that slides out on the side of the counter, that's going to cost me seventy five bucks. I just I just yeah. am going to be prepared for it if it happens. Um, and at first, it was always scary. Every time we dropped the unit off, we were like, okay, please don't let anything bad yeah. happen. Please don't let anything bad happen. Um, and maybe it's because we've got so many now that we're just like, okay, next, next thing, next thing, next thing. It, it doesn't phase us yeah. anymore. Well, and yeah, from, from my perspective, I, I got tired of worrying about it mm -hmm. because if, and you know, your audience, my audience, we all know 
something's always going to happen in an RV. Doesn't matter what's that, what's going on. Yeah. And I just got to a point where I was like, okay, if something happens, we'll just fix it, just like anything else. You know what I mean? And we'll we'll move forward. And there are certain things that we can't control. Worrying about something and and that we can't control doesn't doesn't do us any good, right? But there's techs that we um, we we had developed relationships with that. Um, a lot of like if there's bigger issues or challenges or certain things that are happening, we can call them and be like, hey, I don't know how to fix this. Can you go out there and fix it for us? Right. And that's just part of the business. Right? It's part of the expenses. Now, most of the other stuff we can troubleshoot over the phone and we can figure it out. And then if need be, we'll go out and try to handle it ourselves. Most of the stuff is kind of somewhat local to us. So it's not a not a big deal for me to drive up and mess around with somebody's heater or something, you know. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Keep in mind, everybody, it's, he's got over, they have over 35 RVs in their fleet. So they're not talking about one or two. They have 35 and they're able to handle these issues that come up. Kind of piggybacking off of that, the phone calls and the text messages. How often mm -hmm. are you getting kind of bothered with questions and text messages while people are renting out your RVs? Constantly. Constantly, yeah. And it's, it's <laughs> you know, you bring up a good point. A couple of things like you've got to designate who is going to be the person to handle those things. And for me, I want to take as much stress off my wife as possible. So I'm that person. Right. So I give them all that phone number that if they um, need anything done to call me, we've got a fleet manager now that we're going to start utilizing for some of those those smaller issues. And then Robin has filled the gap so many times for like I we got a concert and we got 10 people showing up all at once. I can't do it all at once. So I'm like, hey, Joe's I'm on the phone, but Joe's calling me trying to, you know, saying he's trying to check into the to the camper. Can you give him a call? Right. right. So we work together on that. But for the most part, I take most of the calls and I, I talk about this on our channel a lot. Like you've got to decide on one hand you can do this as a side hustle and you can allow it to be a big annoyance to you or on the other hand you can count it all joy and realize that you have a business that creates great income and it's going to be hard sometimes and that you just take care of the issues you know and that's it's a difference in perspective right you can allow this thing to ruin your day your week your month and your summer or you can just <laughs> <laughs> handle the issue and move forward that's one thing that surprised us a little bit was in our experience, we didn't get that many phone calls at all. We thought we'd, because we have the Airbnb and the real estate, so we're used to getting questions every now and then. Yeah. And we thought we'd be getting hounded with questions. Granted, we only have one, but we got more phone calls from the renters still in our driveway before they took off than <laughs> actually calling us when they were on the road. So that was kind of yeah. funny. Yeah. Well, one of the things about our business that I think is a little bit unique for people who rent RVs is we do primarily delivery. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, we rent to a lot of people that have zero experience in a travel trailer. We also live within 30 miles of the Gorge Amphitheater, which is a huge concert venue. People fly from all over the world to see concerts there. 90% of our rentals end up at the Gorge and they're dry camping. And so on concert weekends, we sometimes, to avoid the phone calls, just kind of hang out out there for six or eight hours as people are checking into their units so we can walk them through and make sure that they're not having those issues. Yeah. If you guys haven't already answered it, what have been the biggest frustrations with this business? Honestly, as a as a married couple that runs a business together, it's like being on the same page and <laughs> not allowing the frustrations to really get in in your relationship. I mean, it's it's hard. It's hard to say that, but we figured it out. Yeah, when when you're living <laughs> it, it's you know, it's like who do you blame, right? And and we have learned, and we we are still working through this that it's not the blame game, it's just part of running a business and that it's not her fault, it's not my fault. It's as, a, as an owner, it's both of our responsibility to make sure that our renters are taken care of and that things are taken care of and stuff like that. And that's, that's just the bottom line. That's probably been the biggest struggle. I think logistically, navigating drivers, because we, when you've got 23 units that need to go out in one day and trying to figure out five of them need to be there at three o'clock, you're like, how the heck are we gonna do that, right? Yeah. So we've got three trucks we have um, of our own that we use to, to haul campers with. And then we've got, uh, I'd say, I don't know, six to eight, eight drivers that we use um, on, a on, regular on a regular basis. Yeah. So in terms of the managing, it's just the two of you. I know you should be getting a fleet manager at some point soon, but right now it's just two of you overseeing all these RVs and then you have six to eight drivers. So we've got the two of us and then our fleet manager who's coming on more full time this year. He worked with us last year and helped out. Um, and then his mom and a couple of his aunts have taken over the cleaning side, which has been 
awesome for me yeah, yeah. getting the cleaning taken care of because it's a lot to c- go through and make sure everything is ready for the next renter yeah. especially we're doing a lot of quick turnaround times yeah. with these things so yeah so we have we have a small staff um but there's nobody full time we're the ones that are doing all of the like everyday checking yeah. things all that stuff. I deal with the customers so as calls come in, I deal with the quotes, I deal with pricing, I deal with um, any sort of disputes, I do. I deal with collecting, I deal with all that. A friend of ours named Parker, who was my kind of fix-it guy, he's a fix-it guy, very handy. So if, you know, one comes back, the siding's peeling off or, you know, something's ripping or something like that, he just, we, we, we send him a list, we take pictures, and we have a group chat, and we say, <laughs> this needs to get done, or these five need, things needs to get done. And then, you know, he's a teacher, so throughout the summer, he's off, so he comes over and we pay him by the job and he's going to be a little bit more involved this year. We've got an extra truck that he's going to be running for deliveries and stuff like that too. So yeah, we're going to have to have probably at least two more people to help us out with <laughs> managing and stuff. There's so much up in the air with our business right now. There's potential partnerships, adding 25 more units with another owner, you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> I've got I've got lots of irons in the fire with some major um, RV dealers out here, Click It RV, where we might potentially have different locations in different regions. So it's it's yeah, there's a lot of good potential stuff. So <laughs> at what point did you start branching? I guess at how many RVs did it take for you to realize you needed more assistance and you started treating this more of a business than a side hustle? How many RVs was that? Nine. 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 I think yeah. Yeah. At, at the end of yeah, that first full year that was a full first full season we had we were like holy smokes this was a lot to deal with and we couldn't just do it on our own we've learned though on average you, you want to have at least one person that has some sort of like ownership over about 10 units so as we move into the 30s and the 40s you've got to kind of think okay you know when you're putting together your business plan you're like okay i need at least a person that can focus on and be able to take care of 10 units and that means navigating the cleaning navigating the deliveries, uh, making sure that everything's all set and taken care of, and so on and so forth. And then you're pushing it really as you kind of get further into more and more units. Even though you've got systems in place, you just need just raw manpower to be able to to get it done, you know? I know you touched on it a little bit, but how much time and expenses roughly is involved in that turnover? I know it probably varies by the RV size, but in terms of the, you know, the check-in, the check-out, the walk-through, what does that entail? Let's say we're talking about something that's going to a campground rather than something that's going to a concert, because that's, they look a little bit different. So depending on location, you factor in delivery time and fuel. It takes roughly 45 minutes to an hour and 15 or so to walk someone through. Setup is usually, I don't know, 30 minutes or so, depending on the unit, depending on what needs to get set up. And then coming back through, tearing down and bringing it home, that's going to be another 30 minutes or so. We try to do the the tear down as quickly as possible and take care of a lot of that other stuff at home yeah. once it gets back. But I don't know. I would say that just... Just set up, walk through, and tear down per unit is going to run us roughly two hours and 15 minutes, not including drive time, whatever that's going to end up being. Yeah. And then clean time on each one ranges from 60 minutes to 90 minutes, probably. And as far as like fuel costs, you know, we were last year, I would say, consistently running about 25 units. I would say the meat of the, of the season uh six to eight hundred bucks upwards of a thousand bucks sometimes in just a weekend and just diesel yeah hauling things around yeah and then do you have a base where you're able to go do the pump outs refuel refuel propane mm-hmm. good question yeah good question um yeah we do have a number of them around around us sometimes we're in a pinch where we've got to figure it out at the house i mean it's it's a quasi dump station out here but it does tie into I mean, our it's sewer not system. A dump station it's yeah. just a it's a sewer <laughs> clean out yeah it's a sewer <laughs> clean out but we are planning on um in the spring installing a, a full out dump station out here we, we need it sounds like it that sounds pretty similar to our the process with our van to walk through i think the longest one that took us about two hours with the person usually like an hour hour and a half on the walk through and the cleaning and we would provide 
I'm sure you guys have the same thing, but a manual, you had a PDF kind of yeah. instructions, how to do the pump out, how to clean, how to drive the vehicle and everything else. And then contact information on there as well. What types of things do you provide in your RVs? Mm, mm. Everything. Everything. Yeah. We, um, you bring up a really good point. If, and if it's okay, I'll tell a, a story. Um, it's uh, last, the beginning of last year, we had Brandy Carlisle at the Gorge, very big venue. We had all of them were booked out there. And this was, we started the season, I don't know, about 20. I think we had 18 there, right? You know, last year we had an idea of what we wanted to provide. And we provide linens, towels, you know, um, toilet paper, RV use only toilet paper. Like we provide, gosh, help me, honey. Um, pillows, pillows, silverware, 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 all that stuff, right? You know, all your dishes, all your everything you need. And we had we had this in our mind and we kind of made a list. And the list was on some of the units and then some things were different on some of them. And and we were fumbling through this. Yes. And <laughs> and that, that first concert really kicked us in the teeth. It, it was such a big eye opener because um, we well, that, that first night we when people started showing up, we, we were there till one in the morning because we forgot to put our chairs in there. We forgot to put the, the you know, right. blankets and towels. And it was a frustrating, very, very frustrating night. I, I wanted to quit. Really I really wanted to quit. I was like, because <laughs> we had people that were angry with us. We had things not working. I had generators that were just, you know, brand new that weren't starting. It was just a plethora of things. And then to top it off, one of our renters, um, he put he put the one of the, the cords over the back of the exhaust of the generator. So it was burning. And he looks outside and he goes, oh, crap. My the generator's generator sparking. sparking. I'm like, yeah, generators don't spark, dude. What do you mean? <laughs> and he goes, oh, it's the cord. And I was like, turn it off, turn it off. So I had to go run and get one of those the next morning. We went shopping and spent, you know, like $1,700 in making sure we had everything. But we came together after that weekend and we said, okay, we need to have integrity here. If we're going to say we're going to provide some things, we're going to provide them. Yeah. So we came up with a solid list of all the things that we're going to provide. And it's pretty universal, you know, from 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 unit to unit. Some are really, really small. So we don't we only provide enough for like two people. Right. But you're not going to have more. Yeah. People in it. And for the most part, like we 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 have a whole list. And if you go to like our, our website and you see all of our units, you'll see that it's pretty much exact same things. And we go to Walmart and we spend, you know, money on the new stuff, but it's not super expensive. I mean, at, at, at first you're going to spend the money, but, you know, over time we do charge prep fees, which covers some of those costs and stuff like that. It was uh, it was a big eye opener for us and our business and we needed it. We really needed to go through that. I hired a part time gal because it was it was there's just a lot going on. I mean, literally, when you're in the thick of a summer and a season, and you have that many units. Every day you're delivering, every day you're picking up, every day you're getting a camper clean, every day is something, right? So to take the time and go, whoa, 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 you know, like you have to do it while you're doing other right. things, you know? Yeah. So I had a gal come in that was just really organized and and she would, I just had confidence that she would be able to kind of really get grasp what I'm talking about, what I want, and then just get them all done in all the units. And that's what she did. She took literally a whole day or day and a half. And she went through every single one of our units and made sure that they all had the same exact things. Mm -hmm. And once we got that done, I mean, it was pretty smooth. My wife did a good job of putting together this, this other kind of list, just a two page or PDF of like, OK, welcome to the camper. Here's what your panel board looks like. You know, here's here's, you know, make sure you're using plenty of water You know, all these just different things. And people really appreciated it. Yeah. And it helped us out a ton. Yeah. Do you provide grills and chairs, like outdoor chairs? Outdoor chairs, yes. And we only provide a grill if it's include like if the unit came with one yeah. that mounts on the back or whatever. Or it's got an outdoor kitchen. We provide that, but we don't do anything extra. We do have a couple that we'll rent out if someone asks. Um, so it's for an additional charge, yeah. but but it's not something that we include standard. There are some concerts that it's it's really funny. You have one group of people that is is totally, you know. Base Canyon, you know, different type techno, and and then you've got this group, and then you got the Dave Matthews group, which they love to have all of their the coolers, they love to have barbecues, they love to have extra chairs, they don't care, they're spending all the money, right? And so you kind of you start to learn what certain groups like, and you know, and it's yeah, we we do provide some of those extra things. Do you only have RV trailers? Do you have any Class A, B, C RVs? We have one Class A. 
It's a 32 foot. Uh, we've got two class C's. Um, one's a 30, one's a 31 foot. And then we have uh, five fifth wheels. And then the rest are all pull behind oh, bumper cool. poles. Anywhere from we've got we've gotten got an 11 foot to just under 40 feet. So all sorts of different sizes, mainly bunkhouses. You said 90% of your RVs, you drop them off at those venues versus uh, yeah. someone that's picking it up. Like when we had people rent our RV, they would come, we do the walkthrough and they would just drive off. We would have like road trips across the country. Um, sure. So if somebody had a motor home, whether it's class A, B or C, what would you tell them would be the difference between that check-in and walkthrough process with a trailer versus if somebody's coming and picking up the RV from your job site and driving it away themselves? I mean, every year we get a handful of people that'll take it down to California. Um, and literally a handful, like yeah. five would be the max that I would guess that yeah. people take them out of state. And it's just more or less, you know, for us knowing that we've got to make sure and, you know, has the oil been changed? Has my, my generator been serviced? You know, certain things like that. Once they're there and you're walking them through that, you know, showing them how to check the oil, showing them how to check all the liquids and the flu the fluids and, and walking them through like you're going on a 10 day trip. So you're probably going to have to fill your fresh water tank a couple of times. Here's where it is. Here's how you do it. Here's how many gallons are in it. Right. And then dumping too. You know, we walk them through all the the dumping. Where's the, where's the hose? I, I pull it out. I show them how to hook it out. All those different types of things, just because I know that they're going to eventually have to do it. You know, and to keep an eye on this thing, or or you know, um, after your probably second or third day, you might be hooked up at a full site. You want to pull the black tank and get that thing dumped out a little bit. You know, from one day, two day trip, or two day trips to. 10 day trips. It's all kind of case by case, but we just make sure we walk them through the right scenario. And, and then it's just all, it's all comfort, right? We all are creatures that just want to be comfortable. So if they've rented a class C in the past, they want to rent a class C again, even though they, they could probably come pick it up or get something a little bit nicer or bigger and have us deliver it. Where do you keep them? We have seven and a half acres out here. So we've got a, a front end and a back end. Um, front end, we, I don't know, fit about 15 up, up there. The back end, we probably fit Probably 20. And then we have nooks and crannies, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Little secret hideaways, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. in your personal property? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A lot of people would have the question, once you, you can probably get away with doing one or two, you have a small piece of land, but before right. zoning comes and knocks on your door, you'd have to get some sort of right. a business yeah. or commercial lands. Have you dealt with DigiShare from a RV yeah. share? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit, like 75 bucks one time. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. They were the ones doing our awning and a couple other things. And they're the only company I've seen. If when you Google their company, they have only one star reviews on Google. Oh only my one God. star. That's I think it was awful. 15, yeah. I think it was 15 at the time. And then after I was done, it was 16. I think it's more than that now because I had I had nowhere else to go. I was calling, yeah. emailing them, trying to because this you know, the awning was like seven thousand dollars to have yes, it, you know, taken expensive. off, put back on. Mm -hmm. No phone calls back, no emails back. And I was like, I wrote a review saying I'll I'll take this down if you guys get back to me. But this has been going on like it was at that point it was like two months. And there was nothing. And then I got an email that said it was resolved. And like that was it. And we there was no reimbursement. And so then we were like freaking out. But not resolved. Long story short, <laughs> we have gotten paid for it. Like I said, the awning's still hopefully dropping it off next in the next couple of weeks. But financially we did what we wanted to do. It was just it's our time. Our time is valuable and the amount of time, yeah. you know, cleaning, turning it over on the phone, right? The email. So yeah. that's yeah. what we're we're kinda gonna consider all that before we jump in and do it again next year yeah, yeah and i think i that's been so like the two that we brought on to two of the package deal that we brought on today that he was talking about was a guy that had he just had two units that he was renting out last year and he said the same thing like it's just not worth the extra time yeah. that i'm putting in to do the deliveries and talk to the people and the cleaning and all that stuff but if i can still make a little bit of money and you guys are doing all that work yeah might as well Maybe we'll bring you our van. <laughs> <laughs> the thing with the camper van, though, is it is, you know, like we had single women go and we had, you know, older couples and they're going on these extended trips. So at the end of the rental for us, we were like, there's a lot of mileage on this van yeah. that we still owe right. a lot of money on. Yeah, right? that's... We're trying to weigh out the, you know, are we going to like run this thing to the ground before we yeah. even pay it off? <laughs> that's one thing mm -hmm. we're considering is 
is this worth it? Because yes, it's making good money year over year, but you know, we're financing it. And if we're going to put 300,000 miles on it, you know, in the next like five, 10 years, then that's not good. So we're, we're yeah. probably considering like putting a cap on like 15,000 miles a year, which limits the income. But at the same time, you have it for longer. So that I think what brand is there? there. Ram. Uh, Ram. A Ram. They they have decent resale value, so you might be okay. You know, it's like like people people that don't want to spend over a hundred thousand bucks probably would spend eighty, you know, or, or sixty or something like that. So that's uh, the that's the trouble too is like when we bought it, like we got suckered into the we bought it new, we bought the extended warranty. So if we were to sell it now, we would definitely lose money on it, which is the biggest difference in my opinion from like you know we do the real estate thing and you know, with real estate it appreciates we've been able to pull out refinance versus right, right. what scares me with this is if we wanted to sell it and the way i look at it in like two different ways where one is you know we're renting it out we're making decent money with it but on the other hand if we just use this and this is for you know someone who isn't necessarily looking to get into this business but if they just want to rent it out and not necessarily make money off of it but just own their rv for less that's also a great option too. A number of our uh, co-signments are people that they just want to be able to make their payment. Yeah. This is something too that you could potentially think about down the road. I don't know if you know anybody who's got property where you can actually just park it somewhere and do like an Airbnb with it and probably, you know, like an upscale Airbnb type situation and it, do little things you can add on the outside that wouldn't be super expensive. But I think I'd like to do something like that. I, I, I've, I've had this vision of like a tiny home village. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I said in the yeah. last episode, she's wanted a tiny home forever. And we got a van, but I guess I wasn't tiny home enough for <laughs> <Not> her. <laughs> <the thing>. Exactly. <laughs> awesome. I want yurts and yeah. <laughs> RV. I want like this little collection. Yeah. 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 I cannot believe the time we're already approaching 40 minutes here. And unfortunately, we have to start wrapping up. But guys, if you're listening to this podcast, let us know in a comment or reach out to us on our travelpath.com. Let us know if you want to have Lewis and Robin back on this podcast, because I think we're just scratching the surface here. We got into kind of the basics of fundamentals of starting out with the business, but I want to get into the expansion and where you guys are now. So if you're listening, leave us a comment, reach out to us on our travelpath.com and let us know if you want to have them back, because I think there's a lot more to unfold here, but I cannot let you guys go without asking one question, which is what is the worst experience you've had with a renter so far? Ooh. Jeez. So the guy, the guy was really nice in the beginning. Really nice, really cool. He was, uh, he was kind of a friend of one of our return renters for a big concert that we have. I was like, okay, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll rent it to him. You know, no problem. Um, got to know him, chatted with him a little bit. Got the unit there. Uh, he wanted us to try to, um, because they kind of line us out. You know, and the doors are all kind of facing one way. So well, sometimes they'll let us kind of face one the other way. So the door, both doors are facing each other. Right. So they get a little bit of privacy there. So we did that for them. And this unit, this, this, this event, this event was one of the largest ones all summer long. It was huge. And and I'd say this event, they had the most RVs, I think, rented out of all of them, you know, and in some cases, probably all combined. It was huge. A lot of campers. Out they just packed them in super tight. Super tight. And it's dry camping. So everyone has a generator. Yeah. So this is an important piece yeah. of this. Situation. So, <laughs> as you can imagine, right, we, we see all the warnings with generators, right? Don't have them in close proximities, don't have them indoors, you know, because you can get carbon monoxide poisoning. Well, the, all these RVs have these monitors. They get back, they're all drunk. It's 12 o'clock, 1230 at night, and everybody's carbon monoxide, monoxide monitors are going. Well, they all fire up their generators yeah, to fire, cool down the campers and to cook they're and getting ready to, to go know. to bed. His carbon monoxide monitors started going off. And it's just beeping and beeping and beeping. And I, I know they're they're annoying. I mean, they're so annoying, right? So he calls me up in the middle of the night, woke me up, or his wife did. I'm just like halfway asleep. And I'm like, well, okay, what's going on? And, and if, okay, well, there's two things that could happen. Your battery's like dangerously low. That's why it goes off. Or number number two, you actually have carbon dioxide poisoning um, or, or, you know, fumes going on in, in, that, in the unit. And that's, that's a good thing. It saves, saves your life, right? And he just, man, he just started going off about the unit and about where he parked and he could have found a better spot and just, oh, it was the worst conversation I ever had. Call me every name in the book. Tell me. Got some really important friends and they're going to put bad reviews about us. I mean, just, it was just, it was, it was 
terrible. And yeah, he's like, if you don't, if you don't give me a return, I'm going to, I'm going to move out right now. And if you don't give me a return, then I'm going to challenge the the charge, all this stuff. Anyway, it, it ended up where we just returned the money. I didn't want to deal with the guy anymore. Um, he moved out that night. And I don't know what he did. Yeah. He did. Pulled all his stuff out of the camper. Maybe camped in the back yeah. of his SUV. I don't know. And I've got friends all over the place, so I had people going and checking on the unit. I have, I had, you know, guys going to make sure everything was okay and everything was put away and stuff. So we closed that up, and ended up returning his money. and And that was just kind of the the worst experience I've ever it had was with any. Wild. I mean, we've had people upset about things here and there, and we've been able to fix them. We've been able to go. You know what? That's our fault. We will go take care of that, or something broke on it, or something, and we went and fixed it. But nothing like this. It was pretty bad. <laughs> That's yeah. upsetting. But I'm sure for every, you know, the story like that, you probably have like five good ones, right? Oh, my God. Right. We had 300 rentals last year. And that one was by far the only one, yeah. the only bad one we can really remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had There was another one where a guy, like everything started, stopped working. And it was my fault, rookie mistake. And everything stopped working. And I'm like, yeah, he can't, he couldn't get the slide in. He couldn't figure stuff out. None of the lights were working. Things were flickering. And I was like, it sounds like a total electrical issue. Well, I went, he took off a night early. He took his family and took off a night early. I went and checked it out. Well, the plug-in that was um, on the 30 amp plug-in was just not working. And part of their, part of their process would have been like to check it out first, call call the camp host and have them come check it out. I switched it to the other thing. Everything worked fine. I mean, just, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> Most of the time, the problems usually are a pretty simple fix, and you just yeah. jump to yeah. the worst conclusion and yeah. don't actually think about all those little things that just could, you know. Right. Yeah. Quickly. <laughs> we can pretty much troubleshoot just about anything now. We've we've been through so much that any any issue that happens, it's, it's a pretty much, okay, tell me what's going on here, what's going on there okay, that sounds like this, or you're not getting full power, or, you know, something's going on, and we're, we're able to pretty much fix it. Yeah, I think the lessons yeah. there are to make sure your smoke and COs, the batteries are good, and yeah. then we've been in the same situation. You have a pain-in-the-butt client. You just give them the money back. Whether they deserve yeah. it or not, it's not worth the headache in the future. Save the review and just be done with it. Yeah. yeah. Before we wrap up, Robin Lewis, if you want to just share one last time where my audience can find you guys. CentralWashingtonRVRentals.com for RV rental needs, but we're also about that RV life on YouTube. And we're on Facebook as LRVEL does as well. Yeah, about that RV life and pretty much uh, Instagram, TikTok. We even got a Twitter. We don't really use that much. But, you know, I mean, about that RV life is just about everywhere. For sure, the YouTube channel. Awesome. Everyone, go check them out. Robin Lewis, thanks again. Thank Thank you you so much. Appreciate it.